Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is David Eichlein, Farms Manager at Balbury Home Farms. Um, we are a large farming, uh, family owned farming business uh, in Central Fife, as already described. Um, one delegate here introduced me to another earlier as a bad farmer from the east. Um, we are predominantly an arable business. We farm 1,200 hectares of land. Uh, I, I, said, I am not the owner, I'm the manager. Um, it's been owned by the Balfour family uh, since 1642. And the next generation <coughs> has just taken over at the start of the year. Um, we have 750 hectares of combinable cropping, 150 hectares of vegetables and potatoes, including cabbages, cauliflowers, carrots, sometimes parsnips. Um, and we also have 300 hectares of grass of so varying quality and altitude, um, which supports 250 suckler cows, and we finish all the progeny. Um, on top of the 1,200 hectares, we have 350 hectares of commercial forestry. Um, our soils are predominantly uh, sandy loams, um, which, again, for those in the room who understand it, it, it that, that's what allows the, the vegetable production. We're on the south side of the Howard Fife, which is a vast area of very fertile um, land. Um, and we have packing company kettle produce based in the area, so there's a lot of demand for um, vegetable production in the area, and the land can support that. Uh, our altitude, we go all the way from 200 feet above sea level right up to nearly the top of the East Lomond Hill, which is 1,250. So we've got heather on the hill and some of the best arable land down at 200 feet, all within a distance of six miles. Um, so it's quite a, a big range of what we've got. Um, I'm here to talk about regenerative agriculture today. Now, what is regenerative agriculture? Now, I looked up uh, Google and it came up with something about um, farming without pesticides and such and such, and I thought I didn't really like that, so I just scrubbed that, but I'm not going to use that as, the, as my definition. How I like to describe it is building soil, improving the soil, improving its structure, its ability to produce, um, and increasing its workability, uh, and at the same time working with nature rather than fighting it. You know, nature always wins. It doesn't matter whether it's a chemical out of a bottle, an antibiotic, you know, it, water always wants to flow downhill no matter what you do. Um, you, we're going to be much better off if we can work with it rather than challenge it too much. And we, we see that, you know, resistance to antibiotics, the pesticides we're using, they last a few years and then it doesn't kill the weeds, it doesn't control the diseases, etc. Um, same with livestock. We, we've got to learn to work around it and work with it um, together. Where are we on this journey of... Uh, of Regenerative agriculture. We're just at the start, really. We're just at the very start. Um, I've always been a believer in looking after the soil ever since I was a wee boy. Um, trying, you know, that was that was that's where the money comes from. You, they're not making any more of it. Uh, if you punish it too much, as I said, nature will fight back and it will defeat you. Um, so we started off with uh, moving to lighter, smaller tractors on the farming area that we have so that we just reduce soil compaction um, and that made a huge difference to, to our cropping um, saved some money as well uh, the next thing we did about seven years ago we stopped <laughs> gosh I'm not sure what that was we stopped um, we stopped sowing tram lines in the fields so this field this field's about 500 meters top to bottom and it rises 150 feet from top to bottom. So it's quite a steep slope. And this picture was taken in February, I think, last year. Now, normally, if, when, uh, if we'd put tram lines in the field, the, the soil would have washed down that hill over the winter. You can't stop it. It's, gonna, it's just nature's way. Um, but because we've got crop growing in that tram line and we've got um, satellite steering technology on most of our tractors now, we can put the tram lines in when we need to work them in the field, as has been done here. But there's still a crop growing there, and you will notice there's no soil wash in that field at all. Uh, I mean, usually there'd be a, a big muddy wet bit at the bottom of the hill there. 
but there's none at all. There's nothing. It hasn't moved. And it'll stay like that most of the season. Um, it does cause one or two issues at harvest in that we've got a lot of greens in the tram line, so it slows the combine down a little bit. But we've taken a conscious decision to do that and we, we, we deal with it. Um, but it's, you've got to get head around it. You've got to want to make it work. Um, you'll see here, so this, is, this is a field just sown recently. That, was, that picture was taken on Sunday night, this week just passed. That's a field of spring oats just come through. Um, this is another of our soil um, health initiatives. Uh, is we've, we've, we've taken the route of trying some direct drilling. We spent £70,000 buying a brand new direct drill. It was the first one of its type in Scotland. And um, that was three, 2016 we bought that. And I did some direct drilling down in the south of England many years ago with great success and thought, yeah, we'll come to Scotland and we'll do it and it'll be grand. And we've succeeded, but we've had some spectacular fa failures as well. And when the failures happen, they're expensive. Just as, a, 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 as an example, last year we no-tilled most of our spring barley and about 50% of our wheat. And it's cost us £80,000 of lost revenue as a result because the crops were not as they should have been. So it needs to be borne in mind that listening to all the, the good ideas about um, what's the best way to look after your soil um, and the ideal way to do things, if it works, and I'm one that wants to make it work and always have done, even I can fail at it and it's costly. That's really costly. I mean, that sort of money could stop some farming businesses. We're lucky we're large enough, we've taken a big gulp, and um, yeah, it's a bit painful, put it that way. We'd have been better off if we had bought the machine at all and just carried on ploughing everything and doing what we're doing quite considerably. Um, but the main point about this photograph is when it works, it's fantastic. You can't beat it. And the savings are there. That's one pass to the drill, shut the gate, job done. It, it's brilliant. The crop's all there. It's, that's going to yield well. I have no worries on that front at all. Um, so these are one or two of the things we've been trying. Um, the other thing, regenerative agriculture really requires, I think in my mind, livestock to be integrated back into our systems. Our farm has, um, like a lot, has become very polarised. Well, the livestock are always on the same fields of grass every year. And they're grass because they're not convenient to plough up. They're a bit stony, a bit steep, what have you. Um, and the arable land has been predominantly the same fields every year, which haven't seen livestock for years. And the fertility's suffering whilst the fertility's building on the other end of the estate. So we are going back to trying to outwinter cattle. Um, luckily, we've got sand enough ground, although we can hopefully do this. Uh, and our first trial of it was this winter just been. Um, and we had 150 cows outside until the new year, grazing kale and fed bales of silage. And that worked. The stockmen weren't too keen. They liked the tractors, they liked the <coughs> the shed, but we managed to persuade them that it could be done uh, sensibly. Um, we're also using cover crops as part of our greening. All of our greening is a green cover crop sown in the autumn and um, that's allowing us to put livestock on in the spring before those fields go back into crop, which again is, is recycling the nutrients that the cover crops have drawn out of the ground over the winter, putting it back in so we can potentially cut fertiliser application the following year, and just building a bit of biology and goodness and structure in the soil. Um, obviously not all soils are suited to to keeping livestock outside the winter, so it's um, not everybody has that option. We're fortunate. Five minutes, right? <laughs> livestock. This is the next. This is our, my next mad, which my neighbours think I'm putty. That's a field of wheat, taken picture taken in February. Um, field was sown in September. Came away lush and strong after a good crop of tatties last year, and uh, well, we put the sheep on it and let them to graze it down. Bit of growth regulator. Early fungicide, you know, take the dirt disease leaves away. Uh, we did it with a field of oats the previous year. It was the best yielding crop on the place. Um, I didn't have time to take a photograph of that field today, but it looks fantastic. It's knee high, strong, thick, as it should be. Um, 
So you know, again, this is this is really integrating the the, the <coughs> livestock and the arable together. But we don't have the sheep; they come down from a hill farm of Dorada for the winter. So you know, you don't have to have your own livestock if if these are things you want to try. Um, this picture was put in to see if anybody was awake and had been listening to what I've been saying. What's, that's a field of spring barley again, taken recently. Um, what's odd about that field for the farmer? Anybody here? Trampling. No trampling. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate it's a flat field. So, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of soil erosion in that field anyway. Um, but that's the field taken more or less from the same spot. That's where those cows were grazing that kale that you saw there. Same field. Same spot. Um, soon late, obviously this year with a bad spring, but it's coming away nicely. It's great. Um, we min-tilled that, kept all the organic matter in the top few inches of the soil. The worm life in that field is amazing. You dig down and you'll get 10, 15 worms in a spade full every, every day of the year. It's incredible. Um, the important is we'll wreck it next year soon carrots. So <laughs> that is a problem. Vegetable production is difficult. How do we grow vegetables and look after our soil? I haven't cracked that one yet. Uh, we're, we're trying a few things, but it's a long way off. I think the public want the vegetables. We've got to grow them. We've got to make money. This is uh, this is how extreme you can get. Uh, this is direct drilling. Uh, this is a cover crop, mixed cover crop. So uh, last June. July, sorry, after a crop of rye for an AD plant, which came off early. Cover crop grew away, it was about knee high, and we just went straight in with no till drill. That's sowing crop of oats on the 20th of uh, September last year, and on the 9th of November, that field looked like that. So, again, when it works, it's fantastic, and that field looks tremendous today. Um, that's a flavour of what we're trying, um, but I must, I really want to stress the point of it has, we spent a lot of money trying to do this, we've bought huge tyres for the tractors, we've invested in the technology, the drill cost a fortune, we've still got our old seeding system too, um, and it doesn't always work. So we need to be careful what, what policies we push forward as to being the answer. As I want it to work, and I can still fail. If growers who don't want it to work, they'll just make it not work. And it will, the industry will go backwards very quickly. We are seeing huge increases in wildlife. The Game and uh, Wildlife Conservancy Conservation Trust are doing surveys on us just now, and we've got all the wildlife you want. Uh, grass strips everywhere to do, you know, all around the place. There's, you know, last year's stubble is still there, so it's nothing's disturbed. So there's the wildlife just going up and up and up, uh, which is a win on that side of things. Um, the soil travels better. Our fields are draining better as a result of it when it works. Um, but again, when it doesn't work, it's costly. So that's it. It's a flavour. There's so much to talk about, but that's a 15 minutes. Isn't it? Minute left. One minute. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> um, I'll just stop. I think I'll just stop. Somebody else will go for a minute. There we go.